What are you doing, man? It's 1 a.m. Nothing. Were you listening to Final Fantasy music again? No. Right. Alright. Hey, what's up? My name is Alex. I'm a music producer, and today I want to do an analysis of A Long Fall from FF14 Shadow Bangers, because this is a total banger. It plays during the twinning dungeon, and it sounds something like this. Freaking awesome! I freaking love this track. I don't know if you can tell. It's so freaking dancey. But let's talk about stuff already because there's so much to talk about right now there's a reason why when you enter this dungeon you're like fuck this game i just need to dance now uh the music is so freaking amazing first thing is that it's a very quick tempo one two three four another thing that you notice is that the hint of why this music sounds so energetic is in the intro which is has this four on the floor kick pattern that does something like this four on the floor is a pattern when basically the kick is playing on every single beat as to instruct the people who listen to the music to understand the rhythm very easily. It's very used in electronic dance music and stuff like that because it's very easy to dance to. And also you have this bass line that does octaves. I freaking love this because it's very simple, but also it sounds very dancey because of one trick called sidechain compression that basically makes it duck out. That's cool. Another thing is this technique of playing octaves on bass uh, sounds very awesome and it's also used in other tracks from FF14, for example, the Alexander Rise theme. And also in other genres of music, Mused used it in a song called Uprising in the intro. It just sounds very good when you play octaves on bass. But in this case, because of such a compression and because of the four and floor kick, it sounds even cooler and more dancey like. And freaking love that. That's like Crystal Tower theme. But here, just hinting at it, because obviously the twinning is sort of connected to a certain character that has to do with the Crystal Tower. So you're like, oh, they're calling that motif in this dungeon. So freaking cool. But also, what I love in terms of like the energy this is giving me is the chords. The chords on the guitar sound super funky. You know, it's very cool chord progression, sort of like a mantra, it keeps on repeating itself. But what I like about this is that it's syncopated. Now, syncopated is a rhythm that you use in music theory to describe a rhythm that doesn't follow the grid or the beat perfectly. We have the kick that does pum, tum, 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 one, two, three, four. But some notes in this chord progression do not follow the beat perfectly. They're kind of out of the beat. I'm gonna show you how this would sound like if it were completely on the beat all the time. But when you make the actual syncopated rhythm, it sounds more cool because it's challenging the rhythm that the four on the floor kick is establishing. And by challenging it, it's adding more nuance to the rhythm. And it's like this funky feeling. You're like, whoa, this is pretty freaking cool. And also the guitar sounds so freaking awesome. The distortion they added in the twinning track, it sounds like an anime opening. I love that. Now, another thing I wanted to notice is the underlying melody inside the distorted guitars. There's so much stuff going on that you almost cannot catch it. We also have the escape melody starting at here and the chord progression changes slightly when the escape melody kicks in. So there's our escape theme, which is the theme from uh, Omega. And did you notice the bass line underneath changing now? It's pretty cool. Now, the thing I love is that this da 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 kind of makes the statement end with a, t a tense note and wants to, like, kind of makes you want to go back to, you know, the loop again. Uh, also, one thing you notice is that once the escape part kicks in, you have now this sort of like actual drums. And then when this part repeats, you have a counter melody, which is being added to the escape vocal because they repeat that part, but they want it to sound interesting. So they add this. <laughs> now we're back to the crystal tower. Oh, 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 oh. Love this part. 
There's a whole map. Now, what I love about this is that you have this sort of dialogue between the two guitars. There's one pent left that does ba 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 and then the one on the right replies like and there's this sort of like vibrato at the final note that is kind of like something you can do on guitar when you use like a you know that sort of like Floyd Rose I think it's called when you like bend it and it goes that sort of thing so that's happening right now and then there's also vibrato on the guitar but what I love is there's like an under a melody underneath that I'm gonna show you now with the exact nose. So freaking beautiful. Ba, ba, ba. You're like, oh, what the hell is happening? And this is all so freaking subtle. It's like it's in the details that you will only hear if you use headphones like this and you listen to this track a lot of times. It's freaking amazing. Listen to that bass. Jeez. Super dominant now. God, there's so much to say about this part. I'm gonna nerd out so freaking bad on you guys. First thing is like, okay, we got the ba 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 ba. Just totally crystal tower again. That's awesome. So let's check out what's going on. First thing you notice is that the bass changes and the guitars are not playing those funky chords anymore. They are doing sort of like open chords. Once again, ending the whole pattern on a tense note. You cannot end on but uh, you need to have more. And that's exactly what the feeling they want you to have after you hear these open chords on the guitar. I also love how the bass run is more defined now. It's still doing octaves for the most part, but in between the octave it changes. Uh, so can add it a few notes to make it even more graceful. I love that. Ba, 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 ba. And then you're like, what comes after? Well, what comes after surprises you because this is actually the first moment in the track where the four on the floor kick pattern is gone. I mean, check out what the drums are doing in this part that comes after. This kind of makes the song feel slower actually right now but it's the same exact tempo same exact vibe it's just this sort of like breakdown where they gave more space to you know actual harmonies and the bass rather than the high energy stuff just to give you a moment of rest before the banger begins again now what i love the most about this part is what the bass is doing i mean really check it out There's so much stuff going on in that bass line right now. It's like just jamming, doing whatever the hell it wants because it has the space to do so. The melody is not so intrusive and stuff. And this is the moment where we can take a bit of break, but we do that in style with this freaking amazing bass line. I love that. And what I love the most is how this connects to the next part in terms of harmonies, because now... Sounds so major and happy now. Happy. Maro! Like, well, okay. Before it sounded quite, you know, funky and everything, but it was quite dark. Now it's like, so. You have like these beautiful choirs and stuff underneath the vocals of Escape that in this particular bit sound more epic and more uplifting because they're in a major key. What I wanted to say before is that there's a hidden motif that people haven't found in this track. And I'm talking about the that motif is heard in the Omega track Escape. But before it was on Escape, it was on another track, which is called Unbreakable. That track, Unbreakable, I think it's from a dungeon called the Fractal Continuum, which is in the same area where that motif is actually born. It's from the soundtrack of Aziz La.
So this track doesn't only contain the Crystal Tower team and the Omega team, it also contains Unbreakable, which contains Azizula. So this is kind of like an inception of motifs and it's freaking awesome. Final Fantasy XIV soundtrack is like that. It's like, there are so many motifs inside the motifs, inside the motifs, and you're like, what the hell? Maybe they're trying to tell a story in a story, in a story, in a story. Uh, I don't know. It's so good. I love it. Now, if you check out the harmonies that led to this part, the chords kind of sound like this. So dark, dark, darker, kind of bright, epic. So awesome. Still freaking bright, but no more. Now it's like a blur because it brings you down back to the darkness of the Vomtif that came before. Oh, there's the prelude, there's another motif again. But, but I love that he added that there, just to end this freaking huge medley with something we are all familiar with. And now the Four on the Floor kick is back, by the way. Right, we're gonna dance again, dance again, dance again. It's like, here we go. Freaking awesome, I love this. I love how they have that sort of silence before the funky part. And they usually respond to that silence with um, those be beautiful percussion feels. Which, by the way, the percussion feels are also playing as a response to the funky loop. Notice how the snare kind of plays whenever the funky loop is actually muted. Now. 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 I freaking love that so much. It's all like, you saw the rhythm is like all concatenated in, be in between the bass, the chords, uh, the drums. Just like all the melodies in this track are like inconcatenated by, you know, this one is from Final Fantasy 3 and that's from the Crystal Tower and that's from the previous dungeon you did many expansions ago, but that same dungeon's music is based on the soundtrack of an environment that came before that dungeon. So it's like this link in between links that is represented both by how these melodies are concatenated, but also by how all the instruments are concatenated in terms of rhythm. Like, there's so many cool things about this track and the sound is just amazing. And it's very like electronic and rock at the same time. It's like this beautiful hybrid of genres, of melodies, of rhythm is just an incredible masterpiece. And I want to have the same coffee that Masayoshi Shisoku can drank the morning when he wrote this track because there must have been something incredible in there. But yeah, guys, let me know in the comments if you learned something out of this video and if you have some details to add, because many times I learn new stuff from the comments of people leaving me. Hey, I noticed this thing that you didn't mention in the music and I'm like, wow, I didn't even notice that myself. It's very interesting to hear what you guys write and also let me know if you want me to do more stuff like this, more FF14 or if you want to me to do other video games. I think I'll do Lahi next, <laughs> but I also think I'm doing some Kingdom Hearts 3 reactions for music and Bloodborne and maybe even do like BFG Division. Would you guys love me to do BFG Division from Doom? There's lots of stuff to talk about in this from that track. So yeah, let me know what type of content you'd like to see here. And uh, for now though, I will see you in the next video. I hope you like this one and that you share it with your friends. That's all. Bye bye.